Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild, and today we've got a very special early look at the Bloodhound DLC. We just tracked down a pronghorn after wounding it with the 223, and the dog led us right to it with absolutely no issues in between on losing tracks or anything like that, so already I'm super impressed with the Bloodhounds just from that first kill alone. They're doing a lot better than the dogs did in Classic, which is really good to see. Before we continue on with today's video, I just wanted to real quickly say that this DLC will be available March 30th for you guys to purchase. That way you guys can also use the dogs, but for now it's currently in an early access period for uh, content creators like myself. We're going to be showing off as much as we can about the dogs in the next few days, and I'm super, super excited to be able to do this for you guys. I've been waiting to be able to try these guys out, and I can't believe that we're finally being able to do that. So. Let's go out and find some more animals, and we're going to run a few different tests with the dogs and see what types of results we get. I'm going to turn off the tracks at some point and see how useful they are in a no track situation, just to see what their possible potential is for something like a realistic hunt. Let's go ahead and get our dog to come over here by using the heal command. And at the end of this video, we will be going over everything that you need to know about purchasing the dog inside of the lodge and kind of just what you're able to do with them, all the different fur variations, the different skills, that type of stuff. We'll go over all of that. So we're about to test something out that I've been really curious about because I had heard that it was a possible thing for them to do. We're going to have it track just a normal track, not a blood trail or anything like that, and see if it leads us to the animal. I had heard a lot of people saying that that was something they mentioned in the EW stream. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch the entire stream through, so I couldn't see for myself, but now we actually get the opportunity to try it out ourselves. So it doesn't look like he really wanted to track it, so it's kind of as I expected. We need to unlock the ability for it to use droppings to follow the trail, so... We're going to have to level it up a little bit, and then once we get the chance, we'll try that out. So it seems like that trait is at level 25, which means it's going to be a little while before we actually get to unlock it. But once we do, I'm definitely going to try this out. I think that's going to be a very useful trait to have on your dog. There is one other in there that is higher chance of staying close to you. So you kind of have to choose between these two, and that's how it works with all of these levels, I believe. You have to pick one or the other. Once our dog gets level 5, we'll take a look at this. But for now, let's go ahead and just track something else so we can get this dog leveled up. And we actually have a elk right here. Let's just put a 303 shot into him. It'll take him down, but not immediately, which will give us a chance to level our dog up. So now that we picked up the vital track, we can hold down the B key on PC and get our dog to track it. And we just got a level on companion levels, so that's nice. Let's see how long it takes it to find it. So it took our dog roughly 50 seconds to find this animal. And now that he's found it, he should let out a little bark and let us know that it's here. I guess he's not going to do that this time, but let's go ahead and claim this. 162 scoring Rocky Mountain Elk. Now, let's go over to our dog and praise him. And let's go ahead and pet him. And from what I understand, that it's actually going to give them a boost to, I guess, their mood. Which will, I believe, increase XP? I'm not really 100% sure, but I guess we will find out very shortly. So as you guys can see right here, there is your tracker and companion levels right here, along with the focus of the dog and the bond. The bond and focus greatly affect how your dog is actually going to uh, react to your commands and... Uh, how well it's actually going to work at what it's doing. So these are very important to keep up. Make sure you're always giving your dog attention, petting it, giving it uh, praise. And as far as the companion levels and the tracker levels, these are both leveled up just by letting your dog track animals and companion is leveled up by giving your dog commands and uh, having your dog actually obey those commands. So as far as I know, that's all there really is to these right here. 
So let's go ahead and get this dog a few levels and then we'll see what we can unlock. So there's another pronghorn. Let's go ahead and take this out with the 223. Get one more down also. So this is the blood trail from the first one. The second one looks to be a bad shot. So we're going to have it track this one and then if we can, we'll have it track the second one after just to see how long it actually takes to find an animal that didn't get a vital hit. But what we're going to do is click the track again and our dog just leveled up in tracker. So he's going to go find that and then once he finds it, we'll give him some more praise to level him up a little bit more. And then I think what we're going to do is I'll probably spend a little bit of time leveling this dog up, trying to unlock some of the different traits. And every time that we unlock some new traits, I'll jump back in and show you guys what it can do. And just like that, it appears that we got too far away and he started barking. I'm guessing that's just a way for your dog to let you know that you are too far away from him. So I guess that's how they make sure that you stay within range of your dog. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. And just like that, he has found our pronghorn. Let's go ahead and give him some praise. So now that we gave our dog praise, we can go ahead and claim the pronghorn. We got a right lung shot, ran 187 meters, and our dog tracked it pretty efficiently the entire way, which is nice. So now we're going to give him some more praise. And this time we're going to play with him. That is adorable. I really like that. That's awesome. So one other thing that I wanted to mention is in the bottom right corner of your screen, right above your compass, it actually tells you what your dog is doing, which can be pretty helpful to figure out if it actually is on the trail, which as you can see, just switch to searching for blood because we made it follow the blood trail. So we're going to let it lead us to that elk over there. And then we're going to jump into the traits because we just hit level five and we now get to choose our first trait for our dog, which is going to be pretty awesome to see how it actually affects how the dogs behave. I'm very excited to be able to use it, so we'll claim that, and now, go back over here and pet the dog. So as you can see, we hit level 5 in our traits, so that basically just means that our dog hit level 5 in companion, and now we get to choose between two different uh, traits for our dog, with the first one being you have an even more loving relationship with your dog, which will increase its overall bond. The second one being a shortcut. Your dog can skip detour tracks in favor of more recent clues, which I think that's actually going to be pretty useful. So we're going to do that one. And I'm pretty interested in seeing how it actually affects how the dog tracks. I ended up shooting a couple more elk over here, so let's find some of that blood. And then I'll send the dog after it and we'll see if we notice anything different with the way it's tracking things. So he just found the blood from one of those elk that we ended up shooting. He's now chasing it down and it looks like he is going a little bit faster than before. So I guess that's its uh, trait coming into play where it's actually skipping some of the older tracks and going to more recent ones, which is definitely cool. I'm liking it so far. It's already speeding things up a little bit. Yeah, he is definitely moving a lot faster and he's even skipping over some of the tracks. He just jumped over that one and went straight to the next one in line. So I definitely would say it was a smart decision to go for that perk. And oh my gosh, that's not good. Looks like he found it. Really? He is barking an awful lot. I'm going to guess that he found it. And yeah, we have it right there. Oh, he actually found a different one. This is one of the other ones that I shot. So we'll just grab that real quickly and get back on the trail of this one, which is actually right there. So it looks like he has actually found it. So now that he's found it, once again, we're going to praise him. And actually, I guess he hadn't found it yet. There. Now he found it. Now we can pet him again. And now that we've petted him, let's go ahead and pick it up. So I definitely noticed a difference in the way that he was tracking. He was being a lot more 
quick to go between different tracks and track down the animal, which is pretty nice. It's crazy that just one little trait like that actually changed a lot of stuff when it comes to the speed that he's tracking. I'm not sure if you guys noticed it, but that first couple animals that we were tracking, he took a lot longer to find them, and now he actually was speeding through all the tracks and getting there pretty quickly. So I would definitely say that at level 5, it's probably a good idea to get shortcut. It seems to be a really good trait for your dog to have. Now, at level 10, we're going to get the opportunity to choose between Nosy and Sixth Sense, which basically Sixth Sense allows your dog to kind of let you know when an animal's about to be spooked, which I guess that could be pretty helpful. And the second one is increase the distance at which your dog can find a blood clue. I'm not actually sure which one of these I'm going to choose. Uh, probably nosy for the purpose of making him a better tracker but as far as it goes with what we're gonna do once this DLC finally fully releases on the 30th I'm not sure we're probably gonna make a dog for every reserve like I was saying and when it comes to those it'll probably be reserve specific as to what traits I'm actually gonna choose but for the sake of Making this guy a better tracker for this early access look, we'll probably choose Nosy as our next one, so I'm going to go do a little more leveling and try to get to that level, and we'll see what we can do from there. He actually just got a companion level, so that's nice. Well, we just found something I was not expecting to find, a level 5 mule deer. However, I believe that's one of the troll racks, so that's going to be a little bit unfortunate, but we're going to take a shot at this thing and then let our dog track it. And I'm very interested to see how this thing actually does on a diamond animal or diamond potential animal. So let's go ahead and get a shot into it with the 223. Although we're probably going to need to move a little bit closer since this is a mule deer. So we're now within range and I think I'm actually going to use the Mosin on it just because this does have a little bit more power. But still will be weak enough to where we'll actually have to track this thing a bit. So I think what we're going to do is get it to go alert. That way, it's not keeping its head down the whole time. And just like that, we got a shot into it. It's beginning to lose HP, but it will run a little ways, so our dog will get to track it. Alright, so here is the vital blood. We're going to go ahead and make our dog track it. And the deer ran this way. Hopefully, it didn't run off too, too far. Because I do want to see... How long it actually takes the dog to find something it does appear that if it's closer it's a little bit easier for your dog to find it as you guys can see right here he found it pretty quickly so we'll give him a second to notice that the animals there once he starts barking that means that he's found it and now we'll go ahead and praise him Alright, so now that we got a few pictures of this thing, let's go ahead and pick it up. This is the one that has double drop tines. Or not double drop tines, but double stickers off of that side. And this side only has a single sticker, so interested in what this will score. It is just a gold at 310.20. Still a big mule deer, though. And I'm honestly, I'm just pretty surprised that we found ourselves a max level animal. And let's go ahead and get out of there. We will praise this guy again for a job well done all right so our dog has finally hit level 10 on traits so we can choose between six cents or nosy and like I said we're gonna choose nosy increases the distance at which your dog can find a blood clue so I think that's gonna be pretty useful we'll probably choose this in a different dog at some point but for now we're gonna do nosy so let's unlock that so now our dog has Shortcut, which allows it to skip detour tracks in favor of more recent clues, and Nosy, which increases the distance at which your dog can find a blood clue. So now that we got him to level 10, let's go ahead and jump back to the lodge and take a look at everything there is about the dogs. I'm really excited to show you guys all the fur types, all of the different traits, uh, kind of how you can get the dogs and stuff like that. So in order to get the dogs, you first have to own the Bloodhound DLC, which releases March 30th in, well, four days from now. So once you have that, go into the kennel. And as you can see, we have a dog right here. But when you first start, you're not going to have anything in the My Dogs section. You'll want to go to Purchasable Dogs. The first one will be free. I already got the free dogs. So for me, it's 45,000. First dog's free. 
Every dog after that is 45,000. And you have six different fur variations to choose from. The one that we're currently using is, I believe, black and tan full coat. And then there's five others. There's the black and tan saddle, uh, red and black pigmented, red and liver pigmented, liver and tan saddle, and liver and tan full coat. And then you can obviously select between male and female. And I'm not actually sure if there's any visual differences, but it doesn't really appear that way as far as I can tell. Once you have selected the fur type and the gender of your dog, click the buy button. It'll be free for the first one, like I said. Then you get the option to name your dog. Since this is just in the early access period, we're going to just give our dog a basic name. Uh, since we chose a female dog, let's do, how about Jess? And after you select that, just click OK, and your new dog will appear in the My Dogs section. And as you can see, you can select between multiple dogs and choose which one you want to be currently using. So let's equip Jess. We just want to click set as active. And as you see, our old dog disappeared. And now Jess is right here. So that's how you get your dogs out. And as you guys saw, we kind of went over the traits, but we're going to go ahead and go over them again. So to get to the traits, you want to go down to the hunting dog section that has just been added to the list of things that you can click on the pause menu just click on that you can select the status of your dog which shows the tracker levels companion levels the focus of the dog and the bond as i showed earlier in the video you can also select through all of these we're going to go through all of the different traits now to give you guys an idea of what the potential of the dogs is so basically the way it works is the more levels you get on companion the more of these you'll unlock you unlock them every five levels Clear up to level 30, which is max level for the dogs. And the different traits that you're allowed to select are going to be loving, which makes it so you have an even more loving relationship with your dog, increasing its overall bond. Shortcut allows your dog to be able to skip detour tracks in favor of more recent clues. At level 10, you have the option to do Sixth Sense or Nosy, which Sixth Sense allows your dog to have a higher chance of sensing when an animal is about to be spooked. Nosy increases the distance at which your dog can find a blood clue. At level 15, your dog will howl like a wolf if you choose the howl command, which I'm not actually sure what that's going to be useful for, but I guess it's just kind of a cool thing that you can add to your dog. And then nosier is the other option at level 15. Your dog is better at picking up the scent from smaller blood clues, which that could definitely be interesting. I think that'll be useful if you wound an animal and it's only a flesh wound. At level 20, you get the sharp and spotted traits and you can select between those sharp your dog is naturally more willing to work and has increased focus which i think that could actually be pretty useful the other one says your dog has a chance to highlight the wounded animal that you are tracking Ooh, that's actually really useful that's actually pretty useful i think we'll probably go for that eventually at level 25 you get the option between close and poop dar Close, your dog has a ch higher chance of staying close to you, which I don't necessarily think that's too much needed, but I guess it could be good. Pooptar is definitely the one that I'm going to be going with because it makes it so your dog has a higher chance to find fresh droppings when idle, and that could be very useful for those situations in multiplayer where you found a track of a max weight animal, but you don't know where it's gone and you can't find any more tracks from it. Just go back to one of the droppings tracks and then see if your dog can sniff it out and figure out where the animal is. I think that could be super useful, provided that's the way that it actually works. And at the max level of 30, your dog will get the options of Brave or Master Tracker, which both of these could be very, very useful, and I'm interested to see how they're going to work. But with Brave, your dog has a chance to ward off predator attacks, which this is something a lot of people have been talking about ever since they first revealed the dogs on the live stream. Uh, I believe it was last Tuesday. But the second one that you have is Master Tracker. The dog has a small chance to find the harvest without needing to follow the trail, which could also be pretty useful. I think both of these are going to be very good, so it really just comes down to what you value more. In the Expansive Worlds live stream that they did on Tuesday, they said that the dog would actually be able to be in your lodge. So that's the thing that we're going to check out now. And I see it already. I see our dog just laying down right there. Wow, that is so cool. That is awesome. 
So I thought it was going to follow us around in the lodge, but it actually just kind of sits on his bed. Are we able to call it? Doesn't look like it. So it does just kind of sit there in the corner. I was kind of hoping that it could roam around the lodge with us, but I suppose this is still pretty cool to be honest. I like how it's got a little doggy bowl full of food and then a bowl full of water too. That's pretty cool. Not what I was expecting, but I definitely like it. Alright everybody, that's going to be it for this video. I want to real quickly give a massive thanks to Expansive Worlds for giving me early access to this DLC. It has been an absolute pleasure being able to try out these dogs early, and I really can't thank them enough. If you guys are interested in following them on any of their social medias, it's all going to be down in the description below, so be sure to go give them a follow on everything that you are currently on. The Bloodhound DLC will be available March 30th for $3.99 USD, so set that date on your calendar and get ready to have a blast with the dogs. They really are pretty cool, a lot more exciting and useful than I expected them to be, and we're only at level 10 on our dog. He's already a master tracker. It's going to save us from a lot of headaches when it comes to tracking animals, especially in large herds where the tracks are kind of split pretty far apart, so I think that's where they're going to be the most useful. We're going to go ahead and end it here. If you guys are brand new to the channel, consider subscribing. I post three to five videos a week along with daily live streams. We're going to be doing a bunch of streams and videos in the next few days covering the dogs and everything that they are able to do. Once we hit level 30 on a dog, I'll be sure to do a video about it and kind of show you guys how proficient a level 30 dog is versus a lower level dog. So I'm excited to get a few comparisons on that. But as I was saying, if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing. Also, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.